If I drink my coffee in the morning, I use one sugar cube in my coffee. Now, the sugar cube contains a number of sugar molecules, and I can express that in number of moles. And my coffee has a certain volume. So when I put the sugar cube in my coffee, I have a certain number of moles of sugar per volume of my coffee. So number of moles of sugar over volume of my coffee is an expression of concentration. The unit associated with this is called molarity. Molarity is a measure of concentration of solute in a solvent. It is defined as the number of moles of the solute divided by the total volume in liters of the solution. The unit of molarity is one molar. And molar means mole per liter. So one molar is one mole of the solute per liter of the solution. Now let's calculate the molarity of phosphoric acid. Let's say I have 4.5 grams of phosphoric acid and I dissolve that in 1.5 liters of an aqueous solution. What is the concentration expressed in molarity? The first thing you have to calculate here is the number of moles of the solute, which is phosphoric acid. I have 4.5 grams of it. If I divide that by the molar mass of phosphoric acid, I find 4.6 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of phosphoric acid. To find a concentration, I take the number of moles and divide that by the total volume of the solution. So I take the number of moles, which is 4.6 times 10 to the minus 2, divided by 1.5 liters of the solution is 3.06 times 10 to the minus 2 molar phosphoric acid. Now this concentration, by the way, is the concentration of phosphoric acid in cola. In the next example, we're looking at dissolving a salt in water. The salt here is cobalt 2 nitrate. And the question is, can we calculate the concentration of the cations and the anions after complete dissolution? So what we have to determine here, first things first, is the number of moles of the compound. I have, in this question, 25 grams of cobalt 2 nitrate. If I divide that by the molar mass, I find a total of 0.137 moles of cobalt nitrate. The next step is to determine how many cations and anions do I generate when I dissolve cobalt 2 nitrate in water. Cobalt 2 nitrate generates cobalt cations and nitrate anions. For each one mole of cobalt 2 nitrate, I generate one mole of cobalt cations and two moles of nitrate anions. So given this, I can calculate the concentrations of each. So let's start with the cobalt cations. The molarity of the cobalt cations is the number of moles of my compound times the mole ratio to determine how many cations I generate upon this solution, that is one to one, and then divide the number of moles of the cations that I just calculated by the total volume of the solution, which is 0.5 liters in this question. The molarity, therefore, is 0.27 molar of cobalt cations. Let's do the same for the nitrate anions. I start again with the number of moles of my compound, which is 0.137 moles of cobalt 2 nitrate, and convert that into the number of moles of the nitrate anions. I have two nitrate anions for each one mole of the compound. Then I divide it by the volume of the solution, which is 0.5. And I find 0.55 molar of nitrate anions. Now note here that the concentration of the cation and the anion are different. And that's because you generate different amounts of cations and anions when you dissolve this salt in water. In the next example, a chemist wants to make a 2.5 liter solution of potassium sulfate at the concentration of 0.2 molar. And the question is, how much potassium sulfate does she need to make this solution? How many grams of potassium sulfate does she need? First things first, and that is, how many moles of potassium sulfate are needed? 
Well, I have to calculate the number of moles from the volume and the molarity. Volume times the concentration and molarity, V times M, equals the number of moles of the solute. So if I multiply the volume of the solution, 2.5 liters, times the concentration, 0.2, I find a total of 0.5 moles of potassium sulfate that is needed. How much is 0.5 moles of potassium sulfate in terms of grams? You find that by taking the amount of potassium sulfate in moles and multiply that by the molar mass of potassium sulfate. I find a total of 87 grams of potassium sulfate. In this last example, we're going to explore the relation between volume and concentration. The concentration of rock salt or sodium chloride in seawater is 0.45 molar. Now, what is the amount of volume that I need to get one gram of rock salt? So, let's say I have a cup and I scoop up a certain amount of seawater from the ocean. What is the volume that I need to have exactly one gram of rock salt in my cup? In order to determine this, we first want to calculate, once again, what is the desired number of moles? I have to convert one gram of rock salt, sodium chloride, into the number of moles of sodium chloride. So one gram divided by the molar mass of sodium chloride is a total of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of sodium chloride. Next, I want to determine the volume that encompasses this amount of sodium chloride. I know that volume times molarity equals the number of moles of the solute. V times M equals the number of moles. I know the number of moles, I just calculated it, and I know the molarity. That means I can calculate the volume by taking the number of moles and dividing it by the molarity. That is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 2 moles divided by 0.45 molar equals 3.8 times 10 to the minus 2 liters. Now note here that the units nicely cross out and I arrive at the correct unit which is liters. Always check your units in these type of calculations.